Good morning, everyone. How are y'all? Um, I guess uh, I'm right on time here, so we'll get started. Uh, my name is Shane Kaufman, and I do product marketing uh, for the AWR group of National Instruments. And I'm here today to talk about a design flow for multi-chip module verification and yield optimization. And I want to start by talking about a few of the challenges that module designers face, uh, specifically with regards to yield analysis. The first is that mon module design has many independent factors that influence the performance of the circuit. For example, uh, registration error between the different layers, the edge tolerances of the metals, and of course, the surface mount parts uh, you know, for the make up the, the matching network on, on top of the chip. Um, due to the number of independent variables and the fact that corners analysis has an exponential growth with the number of independent variables, um, the number of yield trials required um, becomes quite impractical to simulate. If you take uh, a simple example of a, or a five layer board with just 10 surface mount components, which is a very small board by today's standards, um, if you have a variable for each of the layers of registration error, edge tolerance, um, dielectric variation, and uh, 10 variables, you know, one each for the surface mount parts, um, it gives you about 33 and a half million simulations that you would need to do to do a proper corners analysis. Um, and that is a lot of simulation. The, the second problem is that almost always the different parts of the module are different technologies and therefore they're developed in uh, different tools. Um, you know, as, a, as an example, um, in this particular example, you might have, let me get my laser pointer here, because this one doesn't work on the screen. Does that work? Laser pointer. All right, we have a, a SIGI chip here that was designed in Cadence, uh, a gas PA here that was designed in Microwave Office, the module and the matching networks below that, and then some acoustic filters that were also designed in mi Microwave Office. Um, Turn off the laser pointer. Oops, did not mean to advance. Um, and obviously, different tools are um, better for uh, designing different technologies. And uh, designers really you know, should work in the tool that's most efficient for whatever technology that they're designing in. So tool interoperability allows designers to work in the environment that favors the design type that they're working on. So this is something that's also very important. Um, so we've come up with a flow in Microwave Office that addresses the uh, concerns that I mentioned a moment ago. Um, running a Monte Carlo analysis rather than a corners analysis is a, uh, a good way to get yield results without so many trials. Um, shape modifiers and our unified database lend themselves well uh, to the manufacturing variations, the registration error, edge tolerance, those things. Um, being able to simulate those uh, to do, perform the simulations in parallel rather than uh, serially, and then obviously being able to talk with different tools. So we're talking about Monte Carlo analysis. Um, each parameter has, rather than just looking at the edges of the, the yield, you have a statistical variation, and at each run of the Monte Carlo analysis, the parameter takes on a value within the curve of that statistical variation. Um, and it's also really easy to compute the number of yield trials required for a certain confidence level, um, you know, with a given yield and a, a, an acceptable error. As an example, if you wanted a 90% yield, which I, I understand is really low, with a 1% error and a 95.4% confidence level, um, you only need 3,600 trials, and that's quite a few less than 33 and a half million. Um, the second is, as I was mentioning a moment ago, shape modifiers really do lend themselves well to analyzing the manufacturing variations of modules, specifically the registration error and etch tolerance. Um, dielectric and surface mount parts are a bit easier. Those are just um, you know, parameters, yield values, um, and they have their statistical variation. Um, and we also provide graphical feedback on the changes, the, the, sh the shape modifier making to ensure that you're not messing with your connectivity. So we'll talk a little more about the um, layer-based shape modifiers. So this is just a really simple um, output matching network to the amplifier that I showed earlier. And the image on the left is uh, the matching network with the nominal values. I think it's just a three-layer board and then a chip cap across there with, with ports four and five. 
Um, but as you can see on the right, we've taken uh, the registration error of that and shifted it in X and Y and also looking at the etch, etch tolerance. Uh, the blue or purple, I can't tell what color that is, um, you can see that it's gotten a little larger. And then the, the pink one to the right, the actual line has shrunk down a little bit. Um, so with a, a few layer-based modifiers in AWR, you're actually able to analyze the manufacturing variations of your module uh, very effectively. And, and quite easily. Again, as I was mentioning, just the statistical parameters for uh, your components or your dielectric, these are all extremely easy to set up the old. Uh, you have, um, in our simple example, the dielectric constant has a, I believe it's a 5% variation with a normal distribution. And if the material for each layer happened to be a different dielectric value or for some reason have different uh, yield, then those are all variables in, uh, that you could set up and they could have their own statistical uh, distribution as well. So this just goes to show that setting up statistical analysis for just basic parameters and your, your dielectrics, your component values is really easy, easy in uh, microwave office. Um, as you start looking at the registration error and edge tolerances, the different manufacturing variations, um, with the layer modifiers, you, you could um, accidentally disconnect metal, or you could accidentally short metal as you're moving and growing and shrinking these. And so we have um, you know, visual inspection with connectivity where you can, in, at least in a simple uh, matching network or circuit, um, be able to detect uh, changes in your connectivity. So once you have all of these, um, still the number of simulations is quite a bit. If in our example, if we had 3,600 simulations and you were doing 3,600 EM simulations, that might take a while if you were trying to do it serially. So in Microwave Office, there's uh, the ability to, uh, simul uh, to submit um, EM simulations to a remote queue where you have a distributed parallel um, analysis going on. So you go from your engineer's workstation into the cloud into a uh, server room in the in the building that you're in with a lot of powerful machines, simulate these in parallel, gather up the results and return them to the designer in the form of a, a data set when the simulations are complete. So we'll move on to interoperability. Um, so models can be transferred between microwave office and cadence bidirectionally, um, as well as the resulting simulation data. So the yield data, the output of the Monte Carlo run in Microwave Office, can be uh, sent back to Cadence in the form of a SpectraNet list. So you know, with these two combined, it really gives the designer the choice of where they want to design each component of their system, and also the choice of where to perform the full system analysis. So it goes back to the message of you always want to work in the tool that makes the most sense. Um, take a kind of a, a sidestep for a second, um, and we'll talk about just uh, simulation speed. So HP simulations are, are fairly fast, but when you're performing a large number of them, uh, you know, thousands, hundreds of thousands, um, they can still take some time. So maybe there might be a faster way uh, to get the same measurements. Uh, load, so we kind of look at load pool. So load pool files, uh, data files contain performance metrics in the form of AB waves, or really they contain AB waves, which you can extract performance metrics from. Um, so from the AB waves, you could get gain or PAE, or given, given a certain input power, the power delivered to a load. Um, so you could, in theory, replace the actual circuit model with a load pool file, and then given an arbitrary load, compute the metrics of interest. The, uh, So a couple of other points um, you know, with regards to using load pool as a model is you, you don't need cross-tool PDK support. You could have measured load pool data. You could have load pool data generated within Microwave Office. You could have load pool data generated within Cadence. Bring that into Microwave Office um, and then be able to get the analyze and get the performance metrics that you need. The other benefit is that this, the simulation times of using uh, load pool data instead of running a full nonlinear harmonic balance simulation, the simulation times are closer to linear simulation times. So we're talking order of magnitudes faster for a given problem. And lastly, uh, I've already mentioned this, but uh, the, the IP doesn't need to be in microwave office. It can be measured 
local data, simulated local data from another simulator. And we can read that and then do the yield analysis with that. Um, so since you can compute your desired performance metrics like PAE or output power for an arbitrary load, you can then leverage the simulated local data when actually doing your yield analysis. Um, you can do the yield analysis more quickly and without having the transistor model. So you've done your yield. What's the next step? Uh, depending on your yield, you might want to uh, you know, have a better yield. So you can identify the parameter sets that cause yield failures or outliers. From our simple example, um, you can see a partial parameter set for the outliers shown here. Uh, the two arrows correspond to, uh, I guess, the nominals, the blue, and the outliers, the, the bottom one. But anyway, you get your uh, component values there. Um, to achieve better yield, you could either tighten the tolerances of your SMT parts, maybe look at your uh, manufacturing, is there anything that you could do there? Um, or you could potentially recenter the values so that you get uh, better yield results in the end. One, another way to look at that is to do a Pareto analysis, where you're looking at the, the sensitivity of the performance to a particular variable. So in this example, um, I guess I should say Pareto analysis are actually performed um, on a given performance metric. So here, there's probably a little hard to read, but the left graph is the Pareto analysis for the output power metric, and the right graph is the Pareto analysis for the uh, power added efficiency metric. And those different uh, bars basically are a relative indicator of how much each variable is affecting that particular metric. Um, so you can look at this and figure out what is affecting my performance the most and then make your changes accordingly. So everything we've been talking about up to this point has been in the context of yield analysis. There's no reason why the same methodology couldn't actually be used for design as well. Because of the setup of the shape modifiers is trivial and the simulations can be parallelized across a, number, a large number of machines, um, running a design of experiments isn't costly. Um, the other thing that this, another thing to think about is this gives you the option for the PCB to design with sweeps, where you're actually taking your output matching network and purposefully varying these things, um, varying the geometries, and then passing these and the results back to the silicon designer and cadence uh, so that they can optimize the IC to the PCB or understand some constraints of the IC. So in conclusion, um, Monte Carlo analysis can give meaningful yield results with many less yield trials than a quarter, corners analysis when you have a large number of independent variables. Uh, shape modifiers in the unified database in Microwave Office, the connection between the schematic and the layout, um, makes it really easy to look at manufacturing variations of a, of a module. Um, being able to distribute and simulate in parallel um, your EM simulations, you can get your results back way faster, and it makes the, the cost, the time of those simulations uh, go way down. And then obviously, um, you know, having models, the tool operability, being able to transfer between microwave office and cadence allows the designer to work in the tool that makes the most sense. So if anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to answer those.